two-year-old cub, eh? From bears to bunnies, all in one day. First one I've seen out there. Lots for them to eat now. Cute little things. over there. Where'd he go? Can't find him now. Oh, there he is. Keeping watch. Well, it's June 12th and I just had to get this on camera as being the first blue sky day we've had in a long time. That looks so cool because the, the clouds are right over the town or the fog. Can't see any of the town right now. Hoping this will be the start of a nice stretch anyway. We're here at Sheraton Lake. We finally made it. How's it going, Darren? Great. Right on. We got some steak action happening in the corner. We got two barbecues going outside. Dogs are going crazy. There's Ray out in the canoe. Honey, here's bringing the. day. We're waiting for the rest of the gang to arrive. Where's the girls? Oh no! <laughs> she loves to swim. Thank you. 
throwing bubbles. Maybe since he's been covered, he's gonna dig like tunnels and come out somewhere else. Maybe. <laughs> That'd be great. What? Get your stick, Aid. Get it. Get it. Get the stick. I'm gonna make like the best. Get it. Meal ever. going for a boat ride. Yeah. <laughs> to try and swim. She jumps off the dock. Good grief. to daddy. Come on lady. Come on. Come on. Good girl. Oh.
Cheers. Everybody wave. Everybody wave. There's Ray and Dad out canoeing. We'll wait till they turn around to get Jacob, are you driving my quad? Yeah, that's Uncle Ray's quad. Jacob, hey, give me a big thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs>
Are you having a bubble bath? Yeah. That smells like shampoo. Why? What happened to the shampoo? I just smelled them in the bubble bath. <laughs> Did it go there? Yeah, lots of bubbles. Well, we're headed up to the secret uh, fishing holes. Two lakes, long and short lake. And we've got the extreme fisherman beside us here. Well, we're still looking. According to Kyle's directions, should be a 1.5. Well, can't find a lake, so unload the artillery. coming we're still looking for those damn lakes way up here in caribou country more black bear up here and you know what to do with can hear them there's Ben the lake we've been fishing on. Small, called Ripple Lake. And the champion so far of the lake competition, two big trouts, rainbows, Ben. Hey, son of a gun. He's got one on. No, I seen it. Still got it on. of our off-road adventure into the bush. It's Friday. And the sun's trying to come out. And we're on our way to Ripple Lake. Recording. Where's the other one? They're gone. They're in the bush. Now. Here we are at Small Lake. We decided we're just going to stay here for a while anyway and raise just coming on down. Get stuck. 
course it started to rain, but Ray wanted to go canoeing anyway and throw his rod in, or his line in. So hopefully the weather will get better and we'll have an awesome time. It's beautiful here. after four in the morning Saturday just beautiful rained a little bit last night but lots of blue sky in the, in the view What a way to wake up. Got a big one? Ah, fuck, don't come oh. that waiting for us at camp. Fishing hawk. Um, Sunday. What is it? Twenty ninth. Well, what's the Canada Day? Well, then it's the thirtieth today. And it's uh, huh, raining. <laughs> Go figure. Anyways.
What do you see? Got another fish. Don't see it yet. Spicy little thing. Just it got off. Beautiful view. 9.30 at night. Sunday evening. Tomorrow's Canada Day. Good night all. Okay, we're loading up. We head up. Oh, too steep. Got to back the truck up a bit. Try again.
Grizzly Lake. Ray's looking for trout. Seen a few surface. Beautiful. Reflector Lake. Pretty nice too. Grizzly Lake. Fresh mountain water. Great fun there, clear water Rockies. Shit, there's a skidoo training arm in here. So we've set up camp at what's this lake called again? Ray? Huh? What's this lake called again? Uh, Reflector Lake. Reflector Lake. Just going out for a canoe ride. Beautiful lake. No bugs in the water. No bugs in the water. Nice sand bottom, no muck, perfect. Lots of mosquitoes though. We just caught a little fish fly fishing. Lots of little ones in this lake. Canoeing down this little creek channel thing. Just got over some major logs. Sure is nice. Sounds like there's a waterfall. A waterfall or a, some kind of 
rapids up ahead. That's where the big ones are. Oh, we ain't going down no rapids. Oh, the big fish. This is cool, eh? Yeah. Oh, what just surfed? Uh, what was that? I don't know. I can't see when I'm looking through here. serious too. You Don't better be a chicken. start heading back the other way before we go over this fall. We're not going over any fall.
<laughs> Look at the marshmallow queen. Mm. Nothing like roasted marshmallows. No, that's what your dentist says too. Ain't nothing like roasted marshmallows. I'll touch my teeth after. So? It's too late. No, it's not. They've impregnated in the cavities. Uh -uh. Okay, tell me about camping. No more tenting for me. Cause? Bugs, the weather, it's a big pain in the butt. Big pain in the butt. Big pain in the butt. No more until our camper's done. Camper's done. As you can see, we're loaded up. Tent's gone. In the bag. Video. Quads, well, you can't go quadding because you can't leave the dogs. You strap the dogs up. Well, that's no good. So, all in all, camping's over. We're moving on. Bye bye. We're going up the Blue River. Go jet boating. Oh yes, we are. Mm -hmm. Why not? Say? My wife is 40. 
<laughs> to my wife at 40. The big four zero. Da da na 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 Okay. Okay. Here's your tea. No, we have to video this year. You got a mom and dad gotta see your fortieth birthday. I know. Fancy birthday, fancy paper. Oh my dear wife. My no way, I'm not gonna read it. <laughs> not allowed. <laughs> what? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I have to start off with that one. What is that, Deb? It looks like a CD. A CD. Be careful, it took a long time to wrap that stuff. Yeah, I can see that. I've talked to a friend of mine who's from Brazil who has a completely different take on the new leader of Brazil. Like, he's more positive about it. And then I've talked to other people that say he's a monster. Yeah. Um, I mean, if people in Brazil are living through the current chaos, That's I can understand why they HP might go to a Duterte-type figure to say it's going to be messy, but he's going to clean it up. <laughs> right. But he certainly seems like a monster. <laughs> yeah, and they, they're experiencing Ready. some crazy economic crisis as well right? yeah and it was the fastest growing, growing economy yeah. in, in latin america it was booming yeah it was just boom just a few years ago yeah so yeah. it's like this roller coaster ride we did a film yes, there recently will. and uh i might might get the numbers slightly wrong but the amount of people that were murdered in brazil um in 2017 i believe it was was double more than double the amount that were murdered in syria jesus yeah Christ. i think it was seventy two thousand. yeah and after the World Cup and Olympics, the, the trafficking gangs and the, the police militias just retook all of those areas that were pacified to, to you know, protect the tourists during the, the World Cup and Olympics. So that violence has just come I'm right back the to the front. Yeah. There's just so much shit to pay attention to. Yeah. Yeah. And Rio, the image of Rio is still, you know, Samba on the beach. And yeah, you know, it's I've been a few times. Right. Yeah, I've been Are for we? UFC events. It's beautiful people, very nice, very friendly. But then you go two or three miles up into yeah. the hills. Yeah. It's another world. Well, we drove, when you land at the airport, you drive through the favelas on the way to Rio, and you're like, whoa, this is, uh, this is a different kind of poverty. And during the yeah. World Cup and Olympics, they put billboards next to that road to block the view of the favelas. Did they really? And those billboards are now starting to fall apart, and you can now see, now see in again, yeah. Wow. And you can hear it. If you, if you stay close to there, you'll hear it. I mean, we went into the favela, favelas many times we, we saw one guy who was suspected of being a police informer um so oh the God. the trafficking gangs had captured him slashed at his leg so he was lying on the ground Holy. put four rifles to his head and just unloaded 
and his chin was still kind of where it should be, but everything else was. This is when you you got there while we got there right afterwards. Sorry, no, we didn't witness it happening, and we got there right afterwards. But yeah, it's it's, I mean, hideous violence there on on a massive scale. Yeah, and also, I got into an argument with someone the other day about this. Um, Deeply racist. Uh, you know, the, the the rich people in Ipanema tend to be white European descendants. The poor kids getting shot in the favelas, uh, almost all black. That's and if you walk awesome. into a bar in Ipanema That's with a black girl, everyone will assume she's a prostitute. A if you walk into a bar in Ipanema That's with a black cool. guy, everyone will assume he's a drug dealer. Um, and again, the exact opposite of, of the public image of, so of Brazil. I- Ipanema is the more wealthy area because there is. That's, yeah, that's yeah. the very that's that's the very wealthy nice beach um, area with all the you know, nice hotels and apartment blocks. But they still must get robbed all the time down there, right? It used to be that, that the violence was separated from the really rich areas, but there are now a lot of wealthy Brazilians leaving because it's it's, it's affecting everywhere now. I mean, the, the, one of the experts we interviewed in, in the last film awesome. said, um, I believe it was one in three Rio residents will get caught in crossfire at some point over the course of a year. I, I, I might be wrong on that. I believe oh, it was one in three. A year? Yeah, yeah. But it a was a year. massive, massive number. Yeah. Fuck. That dog's wild, yeah. man. I mean, if, if you're anywhere near a favela, you'll hear it most nights. You'll hear shots being fired most nights. And not like boom, boom, boom. You know, you'll hear a fight going on. Jesus Christ. How much time do you spend over there? Uh, three weeks, I believe it was. Wow. What is it? And what are you covering? Uh, we did a film about the pacification campaign, the police and army clearing the favelas before the World oh. Cup and Olympics. So we went back just to see, just to sort of illuminate it for people to, to think that this is what Brazil is actually like, and, and see what, yeah, what happened afterwards. And, right. And, and those areas were abandoned as soon as the World Cup and Olympics were, were over. Smooth melting Lindor by the Lind Maitre Chocolatier. You choose the moment. We provide the bliss. May it symbolize the warm, caring thoughts wished upon you. May you receive everything you hope for, and may the rest of your days be bright and successful. Have a super happy birthday. Huh. That's why the, the balloons were smelly. It's all the smelly stuff in here. Cool. Welcome back, Ed. Good to see you again, man. Thank you for having me back. Well, I'm, I'm happy you're back, but I'm not happy that there was a motivation to bring you back based on the violence. You know, the violence that is going on between uh, the cartels and it was the Mormons. And then there was, we were just talking about this uh, other person that got shot because they ran. What, explain that again. They ran a cartel roadblock. Yeah, basically in Tamaulipas, a lot of the cartel groups actually make... Uh, they build their roadblocks in the, uh, on the uh, state and, and local roads. And according to what I've heard from some of the people that I know there, uh, this family uh, ran one of those roadblocks. They didn't know if it was cops or not, and they apparently decided to run the roadblock, and they, the cartel guys shot them. What should someone do if they encounter a cartel roadblock? Uh, slow down. Um, I mean, if... if uh, if anything, I would probably avoid traveling through those areas. That's the number one yeah. avoidance. Um, usually, you know, and I've actually gone through some of those myself. Really? Yeah. And it's uh, it's all about they're all they're all, they're looking out for the for rivals moving through their territory. They're looking for government personnel, maybe spying on them. And uh, usually, it in, usually they'll just shake you down for some money and they'll uh, let you go on your way. Unless you have a 4x4 truck that can use for their, you know, their own purposes, which is oh. what they might take your truck. Yeah, uh, uh, specifically in Tamaulipas, uh, uh, 4x4 trucks are a commodity for them. They use them for their ongoing you know, turf war. Oh, right. Especially someone else's. They don't mind getting shot up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, most of the trucks that you see that are arm- up armored or they have the rifles on top are usually stolen vehicles um all of them are stolen vehicles and a lot of them are you know americans crossing into mexico some of them are americans crossing into mexico and just getting the truck stolen jesus is that that's a real common thing it's 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 starting to be pretty common um uh i recently saw a case of an of an apparent abduction uh in uh in in tamaulipas um you see the video and and in the cartel guys come out of the car they grab the 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 owner of a of a pickup truck. They get him out of the car. They take his cell phone, leave it on the sidewalk because they're they're aware of all the SOS technology, and they take him inside inside of another car and they take the truck. 
hours and you thought you know, you would think you know it's it's because he did something or he's he's, he's involved in something they let him go a few blocks later and just took the truck it was all about the truck wow yeah it's resources you know they're just uh, acquiring resources for their for the war basically nice of them to let him go cute. nice of them to let him go you know <laughs> <laughs> it's not always the case it's not always the case but it's pretty, yeah i think most people in america are just now waking up to the chaos that's going on down there i think that uh the mormon assassination was a real wake-up call but I think uh, people are paying much more attention now. I mean, we've we talked about this. When was the last time you were on? It was like five months. Yeah, so like a, a lot of the stuff we talked about those five months ago, uh, kind of. That's how things progressed. We actually yeah. did mention the Mormon communities yeah. down there, which was kind of eerie. Yeah, and uh, we, did, I, I, we talked about the possible designation of, of cartels as terrorist uh, ter uh, terror groups. Yeah, you, you had an interesting take on that. So uh, Trump was saying that they were going to designate them as terrorist groups and that they were going to have military action against them. Yeah. And then there was some sort of negotiation with the president of Mexico. What do you, what do you think went down there? So, I mean, this is just, you know, from what I see and from how things traditionally happen down there. Mexico is currently, uh, has a current, currently a, a leftist president down there. He's very to the left. Uh, so much to the left that he uh, he recently gave Evo Morales, a deposed leftist uh, president of uh, uh, Bolivia, uh, asylum in the country. Um, and there's been a lot of, you know, pro-left political stuff going on in Mexico, basically. Um, how come I never heard of that? As soon as the designation threat by the U.S. came down, there was uh, some sort of negotiation, and a lot of things happened after after some U.S. officials went down there sure and talked can, to the Angel. government. Among them, Evo Morales is out. He's uh, He went to Cuba, apparently, and then went to uh, Argentina, so he's not going to stay in Mexico. Mm. Uh, former head of, uh, of uh, public security cool. under the... Calderon administration, which is two administrations past. The President Calderon is the one that started the drug war. He was uh, arrested for cartel involvement and uh, basically received money from the cartels. That's, I saw that, yeah. yeah. Um, he was going through his immigration process and he was actually asking for full citizenship and they got him on lying through the authority, the immigration authorities. He said that he never received money from the cartels and apparently he did a lot of it.